Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode I'm going to be looking at a couple of Backman Class 37s that have been sent to me by Robert, who has said that one of them is totally uh, a non-runner, this Regional Railways liveried version, and the EWS one that also came could do with looking at as well. So these are usually very reliable, very robust loco, so I'll be surprised if this doesn't work. But putting it on the battery test, you see the cab lights light up, but nothing else. No forward or reverse lights, and there's no movement from the model whatsoever. So this is going to require some looking at. To remove the body shell, you have to remove six screws, and then the body shell just lifts off to reveal the DCC decoder sitting in there. So I'm going to actually gently remove this and put a blanking plate in place to make sure that it isn't the decoder that's stopping the loco running on DC power. With a blanking plate fitted, the model is again put back on the track. Uh, battery power is applied and again no movement from the loco whatsoever. So there's definitely something wrong with either the electrical pickup or the wiring on this model. One thing that's also apparent is this um, underframe detail and chassis part is loose and indeed all of the screws that hold this in place are actually missing. So I'm going to have to have a look at this and get some replacements. To remove the bogey frames from the wheels, I get these long tweezer nose pliers and use the backs as leverage and just unclip the bogey frames. And the wheels are all there, complete with their bearings. Although there's a lot of fluff and dirt on this model, so it may just be a case that it needs a good cleanup. The wheels simply unclip from the plastic bogey frame and the bearings come away with the wheels. That reveals quite a lot of black oily residue on this model. You can see here the fluff that has uh, wound itself around the end of that axle. So there's some miles on this 37, so I'm hoping it becomes a runner again. Here I'm just testing the pickups directly to see if it was just dirt on the wheels and pickups. But still testing the pickups directly, there's still no movement, so we're going to have to delve deeper into the model when we've sorted out the wheels and axles and cleaned them all up. There doesn't appear to be anything blown on the circuit board, and I'm hoping there isn't, otherwise I'm going to have to solder all these wires and also try and source a replacement from Backman. Now the wheels on this model were particularly dirty. Using a cotton bit of methylated spirits, you can see I'm starting to clean the wheels. And there was a lot of dirt on this model. In fact, that black oily residue there that stuck to my thumb was from the inside of the wheel tread. So I'm not sure if this has had the wrong sort of lubrication put on it. But there was certainly a lot of thick black gloop all around the axles on this model. I mean, just look at the state of that cotton bud. No wonder it's not picking up electricity very well. That black gloop is also on all of the brass pickups, so all of this is going to need to be thoroughly cleaned before I can reassemble this model. A reason for this may be that Robert has said that these models are used extensively on his garden railway, so it could be detritus that has been picked up from the outside. Once the majority of the muck has been removed, I'm going to clean up the wheel backs using my fiberglass pencil and then polish them up with, again with the cotton bud and methylated spirits just to remove all of this horrible greasy remnants. And once you'd got it on your fingers, this stuff really did start to get everywhere. It was particularly nasty stuff. So I'm also giving the wheel treads a good clean up here, bringing the shine back to them as they were quite lacklustre and dull. And this is working over a damp um, paper towel so that all the stray fiberglass fibres fall into the damp patches and not into my fingers. A final polishing with a cotton bit of meths there. And the black gloop is still coming off in droves. So what I do is I put them on another paper towel and clean the wheel backs and the cogs there with some contact cleaner just to remove the majority of it. That was left to evaporate and then using a paper towel and cotton bud I still work on the wheels and remove as much of this black stuff as I possibly can. Working on these wheels uh, took about half an hour for one set. And there's four sets of wheels to do on over two models. 
So I, uh, I speed the footage up here so you're not bored to tears watching me clean wheels all day. And uh, you've seen me clean the wheels before with the cotton bud and meths. And then what I actually did was I rolled a paper towel up and then rolled the wheel up and down the paper towel to remove as much of that black grease as possible. And after half an hour we're left with a shining set of Backman Class 37 wheels that have had all of the gunk and crap removed. So as I said earlier, there's four screws missing off this model, which is relatively bizarre, and it holds the plastic underframe detail to the die-cast weight. I'm going to remove these other wheels now, which I haven't cleaned yet, but again, removing these wheels just reveals yet more I mean, just look at that. That is manky. More of this black, horrible, filthy, gloopy stuff. So I'm going to look through my spare screw tub to see if I've got four screws that I can use to secure the plastic frame back to the die-cast chassis. But unfortunately, this time I couldn't, so I had to order some spares from Backman, which came... Um, I actually had to ring the guy up. These weren't listed on the spares website. And he sent me four screws that he said should be okay. And, and indeed they were. They fit in there quite nicely. And they did up and they held the plastic detailing to the die casting very tight. I did check the EWS one. The original screws were black, but these silver ones were all that Backman had to send me. It was also at this point, whilst I was looking around the model, that I noticed another problem, uh, which we'll come back to shortly. And after I've cleaned up the original Backman grease out of the bogey frames and given these a general clean up as there was quite a lot of fibre and old lubrication on these. These again were cleaned up with a cotton bud and methylate spirits as I normally do. And any hairs, fibres and general detritus was removed um, to provide a clean base to which to reassemble the model. You can see there on that cotton bud just how much dirt came off those bogey frames. So now that everything's clean, I'm going to test the pickups directly again. And again, there was nothing. So removing all the dirt has made absolutely no difference whatsoever. So I decided to test the motor terminal directly. Off the PCB marked M for motor, there was nothing. However, putting the contacts on the motor terminals themselves, the motor turned and as it should. So this was pointing to some wire, um, either damage or a broken solder joint on either the PCB or the motor. So just put that on the motor terminal there. So I'm looking through the motor wiring diagram and then I come across this stray brown wire that was tucked inside that die cast chassis. Tracing the wiring uh, individually led me to this wire that has come off the actual motor contact and which would explain why this model isn't working. So I'm just going to push these wires out of the way. I uh, strip and tin the end of that brown wire there and re-solder it to the motor terminal, going very carefully so as not to melt any of the plastic parts. And I'm just going to put one of the cleaned wheels back into the cleaned pickups. And what do you know, the wheels are now spinning. So the main problem on this model not running was the fact that one of the wires had come adrift from the motor terminal. And indeed, with all the cleaned wheels back in place, you can see now that the model is actually running very nicely. So that was probably the main problem with this model, although all that thick oily gloop would not have helped matters and that definitely needed a full service and cleanup. Before I put the bogey frame back on, I'm just going to put a small amount of lubrication on the axles as everything was removed in the cleaning process, all the old lubrication is gone. So a small amount of oil is used. And then I also add some fresh silicon-based grease to the drivetrain gears so that everything is correctly lubricated for when this model is put back into service on Robert's Outdoor Railway. The bogey frame was cleaned up and this is a simple clip fit. This goes and engages the clips at the front and then press down firmly at the rear. Again, battery tested on the wheels to make sure nothing's come adrift during reassembly. 
And then I can put the entire chassis back on the test track. And I'm pretty confident now that this is going to work, which indeed it does. So a general cleanup and a loose wire was all that was needed to repair this regional railways 37. And I've also all repaired and uh, those replaced those screws that were missing. So I'm going to refit the decoder into the um, into the PCB. And you'll see that with the decoder back in place, again on DC with battery power, the model was a good runner. So it was just a case of loose wires and a lot of dirt buildup. Now to replace the body shell, the body shell will only go on one way. And then you put the screws back in. And indeed there was one of the body fixing screws was actually missing. And I did happen to have a spare one of these, so I dug it out of that screw pot and secured the body um, back in place as it should be. I'm just screwing the body shell in there um, off camera, so that's handy. You can't actually see what I'm doing. But these screws are magnetic. It's handy to have one of these uh, small magnetic screwdrivers. It does really help in reassembling these models. And then holding the model up, I just put the batteries on the wheels when I can get it to line up, just to make sure that the head and tail lights are now running and working as they should, as before these were not working. And I'm going to test the other end as well. And uh, it seems that this regional railways 37 is now ready to go back into service. And we can turn our attention to the EWS model that was also sent in. I just uh, one final brush up to get the dust off there. That model was set aside and 37418 was bought in. And again, this was stripped in the same way. The bogies were unclipped. And I'll be interested to see if this was as manky as the other one, which indeed it turned out to be the case. This had just as much black oily gloop in it as the other one. Although one interesting thing I found with this model is when I was cleaning the wheels up, and cleaning the wheel backs one of the wheel backs here had a coating on it that you can just see there now this wasn't dirt and it wasn't paint it was almost like a chemical blackening that they've used on the front of the wheels had seeped over the back so that wheel was actually insulated and was never picking up any current so this was all polished off with a fiberglass pencil cleaned up uh, then with a cotton bud and meths and was replaced and it worked fine so this was serviced just the same as the regional railways one and was a relatively easy uh, service. These Backman 37s and indeed most Backman diesels are very rugged, sturdy models. They are exceptionally detailed. They are very, very nice models. And they are relatively easy to work on with a good pool of spares off the Backman Spares website. So this trash to track was a relatively easy and simple one in comparison to more recent videos, which was a refreshing change. And I'm going to give these two a run on the layout now before uh, for final testing before I package them up and send them back off to Robert. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on trash to track, please email me at dansmodelrailways at gmail.com. And we can get in touch and have a word and see about getting it sent over. And who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own. I'll leave you now with these two 37s running around the layout on a rake of Mark 1s and a military train. Thanks for watching Trash to Track again. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you in again in the next video. Bye for now.